Hi, today I want to uh, answer a few questions about uh, the impermanent loss and how to evaluate the investment with uh, Uniswap in comparison with Alding um, that I received uh, via this channel. So to do it, I, I'm going to uh, look at the one specific account uh, just to take that as an example and uh, to walk you through how think about how to think about um, the return and the impermanent loss and how you can evaluate that with the Uniswap ROI. You're going to find the link in the description. Uniswap ROI is a tool to, uh, that helps you track your investment in Uniswap if you already have one or otherwise choose the best pools where to, where to invest. So I'm going to use this account as an example. And specifically to evaluate the performance of the investment, I'm zooming into one specific pool, which is the Ethereum USDC, where this account holder invested and they provided liquidity to this Ethereum USDC pool. Uh, specifically, the um, holder invested uh, $544,000 worth of Ethereum and USDC. Currently, um, due to whatever the price change, the price a decrease of Ethereum, uh, the, the investment is only worth 440 um, with Uniswap. If he held the coins instead of investing in Uniswap, he would have 432,000. So there is about whatever, eight, 9,000 that Uniswap uh, returned compared to just holding. And that's exactly what I want to zoom in today. So what I'm looking at here is this comparison table that um, essentially compares holding the holding scenario versus investing with Uniswap. Uh, and we're going to look in details at how to read this table and what that what <clears throat> this table actually means. Um, so in uh, terms of um, sort of explaining this, I just put this table uh, into uh, a little slide and, and uh, in a graphical format. So let's read the table first. So we have uh, the, val the value when uh, the older invested um, and obviously is the same in both cases, so 544,000. Um, then the fees that were accumulated in the period, obviously this is zero if the person didn't invest in Uniswap, but since he invested in Uniswap, there were 22,000 worth of uh, whatever US dollars uh, of fee accumulated in the period. Then the next row is the effect of the price change. So the price of Ethereum and uh, whatever you, the, the ratio Ethereum USDC change over in the course of the time. So this determined a um, change in value of minus $126,000 with Uniswap. Uh, this effect of price change would have been only uh, $111,000 uh, if the person was holding. And the difference between these two values is really the impermanent loss that happens with Uniswap. And so the value today is 440,000 with Uniswap because there is plus 22 minus 126 and would have been only 432 if the person was holding. So I just translated these numbers into this uh, whatever waterfalls charts, uh, hoping to, to make that even more um, uh, legible. So this scenario here is a scenario of holding. So we started for 544. There was a price effect of minus 111, getting us to 432. Final state. But investing in Uniswap actually caused that, yes, we started with the same 544. There were fees accumulated of um, 23. Then there was a price effect, which was which is higher than the price effect of just holding. So minus 126. And this whatever sum of this contribution determines that a 441, uh, whatever, 440 plus 5, 0.5 left uh, as a final state. So what does sort of this tell us is uh, first, I mean, the first interesting thing to notice is the impermanent loss. So the impermanent loss is the difference in the, um, let's say, price effect between the Uniswap case and the Alden case. So as we said, uh, the Alden case was 111, in the Uniswap uh, case is 126. So the impermanent loss is the difference between the two. In this case, it's um, 15,000, 15, actually it's a minus 15,000 uh, 
uh, dollars worth. Uh, the reason why uh, there is an impermanent loss is because the mix of tokens changes. If the price changes, um, the, this determines the mix of token within units, the units were pulled to change. And so basically this means that if the price um, rise, uh, the, um, there is an impermanent loss, which, which means like you get, your gain is less than what you would have with holding. If the price decreases, like in this case, you would lose a little more compared to the to the scenario of holding. So the impermanent loss is always a negative contribution. And as I said, like you can you can uh, account it by comparing the price effect between the Uniswap case and the holding case. So that's the first consideration. The second consideration is that also Uniswap yielded um, 23,000 worth in, in fees. So uh, yes, there is a, a impermanent loss. And by the way, the a characteristic I didn't mention about the impermanent loss is that it, it is impermanent by, um, by definition, which means that if the price goes back to the initial position, this loss is actually zero. It goes back to the to the whatever to the price effect of holding so it's impermanent in sense it's not permanent right it depends on the current state of prices versus the fees are always positive and are always sort of accumulating so uh sort of the the bottom line the takeaway is that yes uh, the two scenarios compared uh determine that uniswap even in this uh you know current price scenario price um environment where prices were decreasing determined a yield of about nine thousand dollars between the two scenarios 432 versus 441 um and and which is exactly the roi that is in the tool here and so when you when you actually compare when you actually you know compare here the um investment for the pool is this 1.44 percent is the uh, yield uh, due to exactly to Uniswap. So I hope this um, helps you in the reading uh, the ROI calculation, uh, understanding a little more how to uh, calculate the impermanent loss and the fees between the two scenarios. Uh, if you have any questions as usual, please reach out. There are a few buttons to reach out directly. Um, for example, here in the um, uniswapri.com. And uh, yeah, let's connect directly. Uh, have a good one. Hope this was useful. Talk soon.